Welcome. How are you guys? It's Monday, March 1st. Is it March 1st? No, it's March 2nd. Uh, leap year, whatever, all that. Who? I don't know. You got, you got to fuck with your watch. I know that. You got to fuck with your watch on this leap year unless you got an Apple. If you got an Apple smart watch, you don't have to do shit. Look, I don't have to do nothing. It just does it. All right, well, good for you. But if you got a cool, if you got a good watch, you got to fuck with your watch. Because it's uh, an extra day in February. I don't know. Welcome. How are you guys? Great guest today. Oh, man. Did you guys see Ford versus Ferrari? I'm just asking because... Uh, it's really got my racing blood going. I've always loved cars. You guys know that. You've been tuning in for years. You know I absolutely love cars. I, I photograph cars everywhere I go. I run up on strangers and, and take pictures of their cars like a lunatic. Dope cars in the neighborhood. I'm on it. I love the lines. I love the engines. I love the sound, the paint, the torque, the smell of the interiors. Cars, man, it's in my fucking blood. Even though I rode motorcycles for a zillion years, it was mostly because I couldn't afford the cars that I loved. I could afford the best motorcycle, which is about the same price as a Toyota Corolla, but I could never afford the cars that I absolutely worship. Ferraris, Porsche, McLaren now. I'm a, I'm a, I'm a McLaren guy. I've, I've been uh, converted after seeing the 720S, but mostly Porsche. And I've been going out to Dream Racing. I've talked about it on the podcast, and I've posted some videos on my YouTube channel. When I'm out in Vegas, I spin over and see my boy Steve Jones, and not Steve Jones from the Sex Pistols, but Steve Jones, one of the head guys over there at Dream Racing. And I get behind the wheel of some of the greatest machines on the road these days. The Ferrari Pista, the Porsche GT2 RS, the GT3, uh, the Audi. Uh, what is that car called? The uh, I call it the Ultraman or Ultraman, not Ultraman, the Iron Man. Anyway, I got to sit down with the owner of Dream Racing and hear his history. And it is a story that you guys are going to enjoy. His name is Enrico Battaglia, and he is a former professional racer from Italy. This man, uh, he's won Formula 3. Uh, he's won the Italian 3 Championship, Monaco Grand Prix, and... Uh, uh, many, many races. He, he's raced most of his life. A professional auto racer, man. It was so, it's so interesting to sit down with one of these guys. You got to think about it, man. To be a race car driver is just, how do you even go about that? It's, first of all, it's the most expensive sport in the world besides horse racing. You have to have zillions of dollars. And, um, you know, uh, I was talking to many people while I was out at the track, like, hey, how much is this car? And that Just, just a, a, an average street car, say the Ferrari Pista, that's, that's $500,000. So imagine a race car, and then you need a few of them in case you crash or, you know, whatever. Then you got to have a pit crew. You got to have, uh, I, I, I mean, it's just endless money. So my race car dreams are over. <laughs> it's, I, I love going fast and I love to 
learn how to go fast. And when you're out at dream racing, you realize that racing a car is, it's all finesse. It's like ballet. It's like motocross on dirt bikes. You just have to understand the, the physics and the dynamics of a car and, and, and the track, everything about it. So racing, what I'm saying really is racing just absolutely fascinates me. And to sit down with this man today and hear about his racing career and then how he started dream racing um, a few years back here. It's just, it's just a great story. And I love this man. And he loves watches, too. What's, what's not to love about a guy who loves high-end cars, great shoes, watches, and, uh, and just has that, that good taste factor? Before I get into it, let's, uh, let's do a couple things here. I want to tell you guys... Listen, what is your home security like? Look around right now. How is your home protected? I'm just wondering because, you know, there's people out there and they are looking to scam. This is what you're going to need to do. Simply safe home security. It's like getting a commercial grade enterprise level security, but right in your own home. Think about the security Fortune 500 companies use. They need to know police are going to be on the scene immediately. And that's what you are going to get right now with Simply Safe. This is the exact kind of security that Simply Safe offers. If there's a break in, hey man, they use real video evidence to give police an eyewitness account of the crime. And that means police dispatch up to 350% faster than for just a normal burglar alarm. You've heard those burglar alarms going off. No one's even looking. They just walk by like it's, they're annoyed. With Simply Safe, you get a comprehensive protection for your home. Outdoor cameras and doorbells alert you to anyone approaching your home. Entry, motion, and glass break sensor guards inside. Plus, Simply Safe protects your home from fires, water damage, carbon monoxide poisoning, and it's all monitored 24 7 by live security professionals. This is good stuff, man. I'm telling you, people are getting crazy out there breaking into homes. I'm not trying to scare you, I'm just saying it's the real thing. You can set it up yourself, too. No tools needed, or they can do it for you, and it's only 50 cents a day with no contracts. Visit simplysafe.com slash Delray. That's S-I-M-P-L-I-S-A-F-E. Simplysafe.com slash Delray. You'll get a free shipping and 60-day risk-free trial. Look, man, it's free for 60 days. You can't go wrong. Try it out. You got nothing to lose. Simplysafe.com slash Delray. Come on. Do it. Simplysafe.com slash Delray. Protect your house. I don't know what you got in there. But first of all, it could be you just in there sleeping. That's what you want to protect yourself. Maybe you don't own anything, but you own yourself. Simply Safe. Thank you for sponsoring the podcast. Um, okay. Upcoming gig this Saturday. I'm going to be in Austin, Texas, one night only, headlining March 7th at the venue ATX. Tickets at DeanDelRay.com. And then March 10th, we are uh, a little under over a week until the Bon Scott Tribute. The Bon Scott Tribute is March 10th. Tickets on sale right now. Bill Burr, myself. Uh, who else we got? Jerry Cantrell, Mike Inez, Dave Lombardo, Brad Wilk, Juliet Lewis, Tommy Lee from Motley Crue, Dave Lombardo. Um, who else? Ah, oh, my brain. Oh, Lur from Primus. Um, oh man, oh, just go to the website, deandelray.com. Get your tickets immediately. Let's thank the new Patreoners and then get to the show. Patreon.com slash Dean Del Rey for over 60 
bonus episodes of Let There Be Talk. Kathy Renfro, thank you so much. Love you. Kim Strout, Rise Let, Albert Valcourt, brand new Patreoners, kicking some ass. All right. Let's get into it right now. Let's sit down and hear all about the history of dream racing. All right, here we are, another episode of Let There Be Talking, coming to you live from Las Vegas from one of my favorite places on the absolute planet, Dream Racing. I've been coming here for about six months, and it is one of the coolest things you could probably do in your life. If you're into cars, or even if you're not into cars, and you want to see what it's like to get on a track and drive some of the best cars on the planet, like Porsche, or Ferrari, or Lamborghini, or uh, Aston Martin, you come out here. And right now, I have one of the owners on the podcast. Introduce yourself. Hi, everybody. My name is Enrico Bertaggia. I'm uh, one of the two founders of the company and the CEO of Dream Racing. I absolutely love this place, man. And, and as I was digging into your history, I was like, this guy's the real deal. Because the first thing I notice when you drive, and I only drive 5 to 10, 20 laps, is immediately how hard racing is. It's insane physically and mentally. And you've been racing all your life. Let's get into it. Absolutely, yeah. Uh, you know, it's, uh, I come from, uh, from basically another world. In, uh, at my time, uh, the cars were really simple and uh, a little bit dif- more difficult to drive than, than now. Uh, you, you need a lot of concentration and uh, the concentration and commitment uh, that you need to drive uh, fast, uh, it makes uh, the difference between uh, driving something and driving artistically something. It's an art, driving fast and driving with the right technique, with the right style, it, it's, a, it, it's an art. It really is. And also you come from the time back then all the cars were manual, am I correct? Yes, exactly. The manual gearbox, the clutch, all this movement, hill and tall, to shift down the gear. It was an art of coordination, basically, between uh, your arm and your legs. And everything is, of course, controlled by what we call the black box, uh, that is the, the, the brain, yeah. that gives the order and the command to, to make it happen properly. I was watching uh, Ford versus Ferrari. Did you see it? Yes, I see it. Did you like it or no? Because you're a true I, racer. I, I, I like it. I like it. I um, I al- always uh, appreciate when there is something talking about motorsport, racing, cars, because uh, because it's my passion. It's what I like. And uh, I felt uh, ra- really inside the movie in certain moments because it was not exactly my generation, but I came into racing just after that time. Right after that. And did you ever race Le Mans? I raced Le Mans for four times. Four times? I finished second in class with the Corvette in the GT2 class. And um, I also raced Monte Carlo. I won the race in Monte Carlo with Formula 3. I raced in Macau and I won the Grand Prix over there. So a lot of, uh, a lot of racing. And uh, uh, thankful, <laughs> I'm, I'm still in one piece. And I'm, I'm glad. <laughs> no crashes I, because, ever? No, 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 no. Wow. No, no. I crashed many, many, many oh, times. Oh, wow. Many, many times. And, uh, you know, believe it or not, it doesn't exist a driver, fast driver, that never crash. Uh, it, it's also true that there are a lot of um, medium drivers that also crash. So it doesn't matter if you have s- m- slow, medium, uh, or, or super competitive. When you try to reach your limit and the limit of the car, of course, you have to find the next step, which is sometimes uh, too close to the wall. Yeah, too close, <laughs> too to, close, to, close the to the wall. <laughs> <laughs> Let's get into it. Where do you grow up? You're a kid you're in, in Italy? Where you grow I'm, up? I'm, I'm born in, uh, in a place uh, uh, that is close to Venice. It's called Noale and is the headquarter of Aprilia Motor Bicycles. So I've been already, when I was a kid, close to the, to the motorsport environment, if it, even if Aprilia is a motor bicycle. And then uh, I start my career with a small go-kart with my dad, a couple of friends, in the parking lot 
you know, where they involved me when I was 16 into, into this uh, friendly um, Saturday and Sunday racing. And then I find out that I was the quickest there on the group, also because I was kid, I was light, and, uh, and, and it come natural. And sometimes, you know, th I had the luck that someone by mm, uh, luck uh, find that I had a talent on, on that. And sometimes y y there are a lot of kids that probably have, have the same skill in, in tennis, in other sports, but they don't have the chance to discover this. So the potential stay there and it doesn't express into results. I had the luck to be one of the few lucky boy, young boy, to be able to, to do the, the thing I like. You, do you remember uh, some of those early cars that you were driving when you first started out? Like, what were they? Like, uh, were they high-end the, cars the, or just the the, the single-seat car, which uh, which was uh, the the natural um, move from the go-kart, uh, are the very similar in shape and. Uh, and look as uh, as now the Formula One. So uh, single seats. Uh, there is only the, the the word single seat. It tell you that there is only one person in the car. Right. And uh, at that time, I like it a lot to be alone in the car without uh, anybody that tell me what to do. I was the responsible for myself, and uh, the the fine line to be uh, an hero or a stupid, it has been always thin. Uh, I remember my dad was uh, when when he talked about me in racing. He was telling when I was uh, uh, after a weekend. He say, "Ah, uh, this weekend we won, okay?" So he was proud we won and everything. I in other uh, situation after the weekend, he would say, "E crash." Yeah, no. yeah. <laughs> so his responsibility. Yeah, he crashed. We, we won. won. Hilarious. And, and it's like this. Every every time you see a race, uh, doesn't matter which which uh, which sport, uh, you see that uh, the people judge uh, the mistake, which is correct, and uh, and uh, they. They, of course, amplify the a victory or something special that happened, like it happened to me in Monte Carlo Grand Prix. I won a race starting six, which is not usual in a, in a, in a very tight circuit. And uh, everybody was very surprised, me, me too, to be honest. But uh, it, it, it gave that, that energy that you need really to put more effort and to continue to pursue the, the results that you want. Yeah, you need to win some to get that taste right of like I want to keep going uh, when you start out. Am I right? Yeah, and 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 the win uh, it's a combination of uh, of uh, a lot of things: uh, preparation for sure, uh, intensity of uh, of uh, your co your commitment, uh, how much you like it, uh, stay with the mechanic, find out the best setup. Uh, um, and, and also 50% uh, is talent. Talent is 50%, commitment is the other 50%. If you don't have talent, uh, you can have more commitment, but sometimes it's not enough because the real champion, the one that is special that makes special is the one that have both. Can you, can you be taught the talent of uh, driving or do you believe that people are born with some uh, complete organic skill on how to drive. Yeah, the second one. The, the, a champion, uh, you can do every driving school and everything, but a champion, it's already champion. He born champion. Yeah, yeah. And then, of course, he refine. He have to put the commitment. He have to put all the rest. But he born already champion. I believe that uh, the biggest name in the motorsport, uh, they born already with that talent inside. So... When, when you're starting out, um, I mean, racing costs a fortune to do. How were you uh, getting money to race? Did you have sponsors right away or did your, your father? Or how, how are you doing this? Because racing's a fortune. It's the most expensive sport on the planet, right? But yes, beside the horses, which yeah. is cost also yeah. a lot. Uh, the motorsport cost a lot because it involves a mechanical... Uh, knowledge of the mechanic, the cars, the parts, and everything. Uh, I come from a very modest family. My dad didn't, didn't have the chance to, he, he was, uh, he w he was uh, trying to help me, and he helped me with the, f the first sponsor. The first sponsor was a shampoo company. 
and uh, and this company at that time where the 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 um, the big distribution was not existing, uh, but uh, the small shop uh, was uh, selling uh, uh, a, a little bit of everything. Right. You know, uh, th th this company didn't have the money to sponsor me, so they give me this uh, the, this uh, sponsorship in product. Oh. So they say, okay, this is the, the the amount that you need in shampoo. In shampoo, and then in you shampoo. gotta sell it. And no, and I sell it. You sell it. <laughs> yeah. I Whoa, had a, so I had they a give you the product. You yeah, sell it, and, and, and then I, you have money had, to raise. It, it 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 looked like a strange story, but it, it's the reality. It's uh at at that time really was important for me racing, and Dad told me, look, this is what we have. You know, you have to you have to go out there. So what I did, I did some posters, some stickers. Yeah. And I went to all the shop, but one by one, saying, you know, I want to be a race car driver. This is my car. This is what I want to do. This is my sponsor. You have to buy my shampoo. This is incredible. And then, You're and then, out and hustling and your then, own product then, pre eBay. Then <laughs> yeah, pre pre eBay. And uh, that that's a nice story. But uh, fortunately, I didn't have to fight anymore with this kind of problem because I was competitive, I was a, a good driver and the people then the change and the, uh, the sponsor came and support me up to arrive to Formula One. Who were some of the early uh, drivers back then? How old are you by the way? I'm 55. Okay, I'm 53. Who were some of the drivers when you were growing up, uh, I mean, I think some of the early drivers, if I'm looking at, uh, you know, we got Mario Andretti, probably one of the most famous drivers yeah. ever. And then we had uh, a lot of the NASCAR stuff. But who were some of your drivers? But look, Mario Andretti, first of all, is a legend. He's a legend not only in America, but in the uh, whole entire world. Of He's been the only one Indianapolis winner and Formula One world champion yep he's uh, is the man of the two world that they call it uh, it's so experienced fortunately for me he's older than me <laughs> so i come from a yeah. younger generation <laughs> compa compared to him yeah good but thing you didn't have to raise him uh, is what you're saying just, right <laughs> just to give you an idea about timing the time that which i where i won the world championship in macau formula 3 world championship it was three years after ayrton senna which is a, another super legend about motorsport and michael schumacher Oh, Schumacher. Schumacher oh, won yeah. the championship three years after me. Oh. So I'm in that generation where the drivers, yeah, I fight with all of them. And uh, in the small categories, we had the chance really to, to fight. And it was a great fight because same car, same tires, same fuel, oh. same chassis. The only difference is the driver and the setup of the car that you have to personalize for yourself. That's amazing. There was, um, I love that you say same car, same tires, same fuel, uh, all that. It's uh, funny to watch um, like Ford versus Ferrari because you see some of the mental tricks that the pits were doing on the other guys, like dropping the bolt and stuff like that. And it does come down to um, mental being able not to crack when you're really battling, right? Yeah, absolutely. Uh, Formula One now is a, is a sport that is uh, involved. Uh, every team uh, more or less have between 300 and 500 people to produce basically two cars yeah. that race in the championship, which that's, is a lot. That's crazy, right? Yeah, and uh, everything is so sophisticated and so uh, different because sometimes the top team have a budget that they can afford to have the best technician, the best material, and then, and then of course, they win and they stay in front, like it happened now with Mercedes, with Ferrari in the past, with Red Bull. They spend a lot of money. The small team doesn't have that chance. So if right. you drive for a team that doesn't have the resources to give you the car to be in front, you are at the back. And if you are at the back, it's so hard to produce results good enough to be in the front. Yeah, I, I, I noticed that, like, it's just the same teams every year that win, you know? Yeah, it goes by, by waves. Uh, now is the time of Mercedes, right. six-time six time world champion. Ferrari did it the same years ago. Red Bull, uh, also four or five championships. Now I don't remember, but it's a wave. Uh, for, for, for sure, if you, the, the, the ability of a driver is to be at the right place at the right time with the right people. If you don't have all that component, you basically finish your career in Formula One at high level very soon. Then you step down and you go to do other stuff that are prestigious, very nice, beautiful, but is not Formula One. It's not the pinnacle of yeah. uh, the, 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 the motorsport in the world. 
that's that's an interesting thing to think about like knowing you're on a team that's never gonna win you know if you just don't have enough of the money and resources you're in formula one but there's no way you're gonna win that's got to be pretty frustrating but they need those people in racing or there'd be no racing in in fact you know when i try to go to formula one uh, after I won Monaco Grand Prix and I won Macau, I tried Formula One, and the, I, I had a small team behind me. I had no support from big factory, big sponsor, big name, and I was. A, I immediately understand that I, there, there was not there was no chance for me to to be in front in Formula One. That's the reason. After uh, one year, uh, I moved to Japan to race in a, in a, what they call it the Formula Nippon, which is the the Japanese Formula One uh, to be competitive, to be in front, and to be to be recognized as a, as a professional driver in a, at the highest level. Because uh, believe it or not, uh, uh, most of the time the value of a driver it's uh, it's how much the people are willing to pay you. Yeah. So it, it's it's it look uh, it look uh, like uh, strange to say, but uh, if the people are willing to pay a certain amount of money for your service and for your driving, it means that you are valuable. Yeah. And that's what happened to me in Japan and and, and after Japan. Yeah. So it's a lot like uh, basketball players that don't uh, play in the NBA anymore. They still go to like Asia and yeah. play basketball. Uh, exactly. And, and they get paid and and they can play years years yeah. on. And you're still doing what you love to do. Yeah. And they're paid because they play well. It's yeah. Not because they no, pay yeah. because they are nice uh, and nice face. Yeah. You, you know. So and 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 motorsport. Unfortunately, for for a driver, you have a, it's like if you have a gun with only two shot <laughs> yeah. you have two times yeah yeah if it doesn't work it, you finished you don't have any more the possibility to to get the results that you wanted so there are some drivers that continue and continue and continue but there are people that will never will never win and they don't they don't even have the desire in my opinion because after that you understand that uh, that you are you, you cannot do it uh, also you relax yourself you say okay you know what i'm in formula one i'm a good driver and uh, let me stay over here it's nice i have fun and uh, and that's it uh, there, there are really very few drivers like this in formula one actually they are all uh, good i was in monaco last year looking the formula one from upstairs uh, thinking uh, w- what kind of uh, ability they need to to run around that circuit with Formula One so fast that I told myself, but these 20 kids, there are 20 artists that paint the circuit with their cars yeah. and, and make a spectacular uh, vision of, uh, of what's the ability, the talent, uh, the skill, the, the perfection on what they are doing. So that's, I, I'm proud to, be, to, to have been there for for quite a long time. Oh yeah, man. I mean, that's uh, that's some legendary stuff there, dude. I've you know, I, I've never met anyone that's that's raced in uh, Formula One or or any of that. And I've always loved driving. I've always loved cars. And and, and you know, sometimes when I'm here uh, driving the cars at uh, Dream Racing. I, I, my mind gets into me like, I could have been a racer, man. You know what I mean? Like you get into that, like, I'm starting to get this after 10 laps. I could have done this, you know, it's like, yeah, man, it's, 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 uh, it's the physical, uh, abuse on your body is pretty insane. Also, what kind of physicality stuff like neck injuries, are you uh, back injuries, that kind of stuff from just being in a car with the adrenaline and shifting and the G forces? What kind of stuff were you going through? But uh, you, you know, for for example, the modern uh, the modern car, they are demanding uh, the, the old car, with the one that drove at that time, they were more hard. It was more difficult Super physically, hot. physically to to drive a car. There was a manual gearbox, a clutch. The engine was not smooth, and the aerodynamic was at the beginning of the development. The electronic was not existing. It's demanding. It's demanding on the neck and the back. Mentally, is very intense. How about uh, the ears too, from the, the engine ears, sound? No, uh, yes, in the old time, the, the drivers di- didn't use any plug. No earplugs. No earplug because they want to feel the engine yeah. by the ear and uh, and you didn't have all the instrument uh, 
to to check the RPM correctly. You you gotta you, drive, you gotta hear it. And uh, now now the drivers have the, 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 the radio communication that told them what to do, how to do it, and they communicate uh, very very easy with uh, with the pit lane, with the, with the mechanic, with the technician. At that time, I had not the radio. I still remember the first time they put me the radio in the car at that time, and uh, after. Two laps, I plug it off because I was not used yeah. to, he to hear someone to talk to me wh while I was driving. I yeah. said, I don't want to hear you guys. Track a switch off and then no more communication. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I don't want to hear people let when me, I'm let me do Let me do my job. I couldn't imagine because those guys <laughs> have headsets on. They're listening. Yeah, yeah. He's coming up on the right, coming into yeah. turn four. Oh, you got to go down, yeah. downshift. Hey, you get up in the RPMs, get into the pit. You're just like, what the fuck? Exactly. exactly. My brain, when I'm out there driving, exactly. even when the instructor is to the right of me and he's going, come on in here turn in break hard break yeah. hard go fast go fast my brain is tuned in that i'm listening but i'm really kind of just listening to the car and i'm focusing on the uh, turns and everything it's uh it's an interesting thing to uh drive at yeah. fast fast speeds and also uh these cars are going way faster than you went back in the day right yes, yes. what was like top speed back when you were driving compared to now but the top speed is uh, i mean the cars in the 60s they already reach the 200 miles oh no shit yes oh wow. the, the difference now is the aerodynamic that speed out of the corner speed in the middle of the corner the braking uh the performance doesn't come only by the power the power is a it's an important component but all the rest uh, combined with the power is the one that gives the speed the aerodynamic if you if you try a single seat now with the aerodynamic that that you have uh that the, you turn left and your neck go to the right. Yeah. So the G-force, it's the car is sticking to the ground, very light, very super competitive, and there is no. It's, it's so difficult to compare the a car from 20 years ago and now. It's day and night. It's just 20 years ago. It was 20 years ago. It but uh, uh, but on the other hand, the skill that you need to be at the top is the same. So a driver, 20 years, sometimes they compare who is the biggest champion ever, you know? Uh, uh, the different cars, different different moments, different... But for sure, the super champion, Juan Manuel Fangio, Michael Schumacher, Lewis Hamilton, uh, Alan Prost, uh, Jackie Stewart, Jim Clark, those are names that they could have been champion in any in any moment any era in any era yeah they were just there, champion there no, racers there is no difference Senna I mean the champion of the champion uh, now the people say ah you know uh, Lewis Hamilton is bigger than Senna yeah but uh, how can you compare what happened 20 years ago in another situation the, the, the fact is that uh, they are champion they are super champion and they deserve to be there yeah at what point in your driving career uh, does some money come in and what is the difference of the money now compared to back when you raced and does the driver get the money or does the team get the money and you're on a salary it's a, it's a complicated it's a it's a very di di different situation one by one most of the time the drivers the, the the good one and the one that are on top of formula one they're paid as a salary they have some incentive how many race you're gonna win next year this is the amount of money for race uh, th there are some drivers that have to bring sponsors in order to be eligible to drive because uh, they are not well known because uh, they need more experience because uh, because they try and you have to try at maximum and if the people are not willing to pay you because they're not sure that you're a good driver you have to show but if you don't drive how can you show right. so you have to organize yourself having uh, uh, someone that support you I mean, there was a driver from Venezuela a few years ago, and um, he was uh, he was sponsored by the government because the government uh, thought that it was a good good advertisement uh, to have one of driver from Venezuela yeah. to be in Formula One, and this guy was also quick and he was successful. But to get inside Formula One, he have to contribute uh, on 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 some part of the budget. And it's, it's a very hard job to arrive at the top. Uh, 
in any case. What kind of money does a top top driver in, in Formula One make right now? But uh, you, you know, I don't, I don't, I don't have access to their bank account. Yeah, I'm just so I'm I don't like a, a ballpark. Do you hear they, stuff they, like they, this? They talk about between thirty and forty million dollars per year. Whoa! Yes. Wow. Which is a which is a lot of money. That's a lot of money. But believe me, they deserve it. Oh yeah. Yes. Oh yeah. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Wow, that is some big money. What kind of money was a top guy making back in your day? In my day, it was um, probably three, four million. Oh, that's good yeah, money. Yeah, that's oh, good shit. money even in top Did you make good ago. money in racing? N yeah, I make. Not that much, but I make it. I was uh, one of the few and luck, uh, lucky one to, to, to be able to be paid to do the job that I like to do. Right. And uh, it happened for many years. And uh, of course, I didn't, I didn't probably uh, had, uh, I was not at the right time sometimes with the right people. Yeah. So that, that uh, make a lot of influence on my career. Uh, but I try my best and I, I don't have any regret. In fact, I'm, I'm happy. Yeah. of what happened. I'm putting the same effort uh, and same preparation and attention to details on Dream Racing now. That is my company. It's a company that I like. Uh, and uh, the people that come here to drive, as you say, they have, uh, they have the feeling that there is this uh, passion behind our company because it's, that's what we like. And we don't want to lose. I don't want to lose the feeling when I was a kid, uh, when I was looking the driver, the cars, and the, the happiness to drive a car. So when I see my client coming out for the, with the car from one of my car with a big smile, it's a big satisfaction for me because it reminds me, and I don't want to uh, forget the fact that, yeah. that, uh, that uh, that's important. And that's the reason why, uh, fortunately, this company is successful. Well, I've, I've done a lot of things in my life. I've traveled, uh, I've traveled the globe. You know, I've done a lot of cool things. But when I come out here, and, I, and, and it's funny because I explain to people, they go, man, that's pretty pricey. I go, you know, it's pricey as a pack of cigarettes that you probably buy yeah. every day. This is so worth it. The, the money, okay, I want to drive a Porsche 992 or a Porsche GT2 RS or a Ferrari 488 Pista. And I want to drive them how you'll never be able to drive them, even if you owned them, on the street. And uh, like my buddy Bill Burr said when he came out here, he goes, if you own one of these cars and you don't take it on the track, you're an idiot because <laughs> it's just so incredible. But... It's, it's, it's amazing to get out on a track and drive some of the finest machines. And I never understood a person's mentality of like, ah, fuck Ferrari or those are fucking dumb or, you know, because they're jealous. I never understood people like that. It's like, these are, the fu these are like works of art. They're yes. like paintings. They're like uh, architecture. They're, they're beautiful things pieces of machinery and when they're running you're driving it and everything you can't believe how it how everything works so good you're like this is unbelievable especially if you i drove a toyota tercel for 10 years of my life a five-speed corolla you know it was hilarious to get in a, a machine it is it's unbelievable. Yeah, and also I grew up on American Muscle. I had Mopars and that's a straight line just torque uh adrenaline machine, but these are something else. It, it, it's unbelievable what you have out here. How did this company start and it had to take zillions of dollars to do it. Let's get into what year it started and how you got into it. The 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 company first of all we are Myself and uh, Adriano De Micheli, which is another professional driver, is my business partner. We started this company uh, nine years ago, based on the on the, on our experience uh, as a racing car driver professional. We've been friends since ever. I teach him how to drive. I'm uh, older than him, so when I when when he start racing, I give him the first the first. Uh, lesson you know to to become competitive he had a great career in the saloon car he he's been winning nurburgring uh, spa uh, driving driving fantastic uh, fantastic cars and at a certain point uh, uh, i was working uh, with uh, with ferrari developing the school that i have in maranello and i was in england 
and he he was he was working too in the same environment. Is that and the Enzo Ferrari school? It's uh, yeah, it's the one in Maranello, and uh, so I was uh, like a chief instructor there. I set up all the exercise, and I say, Ado, why don't you? Why cannot help me to 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 you know to make this school more successful? And I said, you know, let's let's why don't we do something together? Where? And uh, I took a plane. I landed here, and it was 2006. And uh, I came to visit the Las Vegas Motor Speedway. First of all, I saw the strip. The strip is uh, when you come here in Vegas for the first time, you, you stay speechless because to see all the movement, all the hotel, the casino, and everything, and to have a speedway, Las Vegas Motor Speedway, so close. And uh, I call him and I say, "Hey, this is our place." And then from the moment that I call him to the moment that we open, it, it, five, t it took five years. Five it, years. It took five years, yeah. The visa and investment and, and, and the contract with the Speedwave. Uh, we have a, a great relationship. Uh, we are lucky to find these people. Las Vegas Motor Speedway, they've been so helpful with yeah, us. Yeah, let, let's tell them. Now, you're in. Here's what's going on. We're at NASCAR Speedway. Yes. It's, it's the NASCAR races out here. And they have the, the big oval. And in the middle of the oval is Dream Racing's track. And so you're, you're in the middle of this incredible race, uh, race track. And, and it's, it's just a perfect area for this. It's a perfect area, yeah. We have a 1.2 miles uh, circuit, uh, very open, uh, very safe, uh, very nice. We have the biggest fleet of, the, of supercar and racing car in the world. It, uh, we have probably 70... 75 cars. I don't even it's, know how it's many cars we how have. Many cars you and, have. and imagine that someone that come over here and see the possibility to drive uh, different cars, super top car, Lamborghini, Aventador, Performante, Pista, GT2, as you say. You know, it's, it's incredible. Sometimes when I go to vacation in holidays and I come back after two weeks, the time that I come inside the gate and I see all the car, it's give me an emotion all the time, even if I know that the cars are mine. So it's, it's something special. When you start to, you said it take five years to open. When you, when you start to do it, what kind of uh, uh, red tape were you running into? Because we're driving cars at over 150 miles an hour um, and, and you're talking about a lot of people who have never drove cars, uh, race cars, or uh, supercars. What kind of red tape were you running into with uh, Vegas? Was it like, whoa, you got to have full-on insurance, you got to have this? What, what was uh, needed? Mo mo more than, uh, than uh, the, 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 the job that we, we already at that time knew how to approach, which is uh, because... I work in a driving experience for maybe 15 years before. Yeah. So we know we knew what we were doing uh, on the racetrack, the instructor and everything. But more than that, uh, we had to learn America. Uh, when you're coming from Europe, uh, you don't you you think that if if you visit three, four, ten, twenty times, uh, you understand the mentality and uh, and uh, everything about this country. But in reality, you know only 10 percent of it. You have to learn how to talk with the people. You have to talk about, uh, you have to develop uh, a marketing skills to promote your business in the way that is very different of uh, what happened in, uh, in Europe. It is also true that we arrived here where there was a transition between the fact that the people uh, uh, see a brochure uh, on the mall and decide to come to drive to the point where the people see online and research on Google and say, drive a Ferrari in Las Vegas, boom. If you pop up there, the website gives you all the information and you can book online. And that was the transition and everything that we learn in these uh, nine years that we are operating. We, we start uh, from another world to a new world, the new world of communication, yeah. technology, social media, social media. I mean, uh, Instagram, when I came here, was not existing. Yeah. Uh, of course, when I was racing, uh, Google was not existing. The smartphone was not existing. So I, I, I feel sometimes so privileged to, 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 to be able to show both worlds. The world b without the technology and the world that is with the technology, right. which is better, I believe. Yeah. But of course, you have to, you have to, you, you know, uh, so sometimes uh, uh, choose the, the how much you want to see. 
I think one of the great things about Instagram for your business is what I would call the fake ballers, where they like to look like they have cars and, and a big baller life. So they could come out here, yeah. pay you some money, a couple hundred bucks, and then take you know drive a Ferrari 488 Pista and then put it up on the Instagram like, uh, baller life. You know, like <laughs> it's funny because it'll drive a lot of these people out here like, all right, I got that Instagram photo, you know, for a uh, for small amount of money. And yeah. I was driving, you know, yeah. it's hilarious. But for me, it really is about being in these cars and being able to, uh, I always in my mind think, well, one day I might be in a, a situation where I'll have money to buy some of these cars and I want to be able to go, all right, I've drove all these cars. I know these things inside and out. These are the ones I want to buy, you know. Do you buy each of the cars? You're, do you own them or do the factories give them to you? No, no, no. We buy the car. No, the cars go f between 500,000, which is the most expensive one. Oh, yeah, one, the Pista was 500. To, yeah, Pista is for, for 500,000. To the smaller one that maybe is 100, 120. Yeah. It's, it's a lot of money. And, uh, and uh, the, 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 we have all of them. You saw the, the assortment that we have can satisfy every kind of yeah. person that come. Also because the wealthy people, and we have the supercar, but also we have the racing car. Yeah. Racing car, non-street legal, uh, Lamborghini, Huracan, Super Trofeo, super fast, super performance. Uh, the people can come here, drive supercar, Ferrari, Lamborghini, street legal, everything, and then I can step into a real racing car with the roll cage, with the slicks tires, and then I have a lot of fun. Yeah. So you can combine both experience. And then the third step is that uh, I had some client that said, Enrico, w w w give me something more. So I invent this concept that called Pilota Lamborghini, yeah. okay? That is uh, basically uh, ready to race. It's a package where I teach you everything you should know before going to racing. Wow. The overtaking, the qualifying, the new tires, and uh, everything. Basically, the people arrive by helicopter here. They land, they touch a car, it became their car. They form their own team, and they go racing for two days. Wow. It's a very expensive package. It costs $25,000. Well, but believe me, we are fully booked all the time because wow. the people want to want to have this kind of experience so basically the people can come here and spend two hundred dollars to drive a porsche cayman very beautiful car yeah. five lap and everything but they can end it up uh, on on having exactly anything that they want up to racing in fact uh, when they do this uh, pilota lamborghini this stage they we have also a racing team on the other part of the tunnel which we bring them to race in the Lamborghini uh, North American Super Trofeo Championship, which we won the last two years with amateur drivers. Drivers Whoa. that came really? inside that door and became a race car driver winning races. That's incredible. He yes. just comes out yeah. here and then becomes yeah. a racer. Yes. Wow. So a, a lot of different options. There are people yeah. that come here to just have fun, five laps, uh, they have fun with the friends, oh, yeah. bachelor party, company that come in town for sales meeting, same sales incentive, a group of 100, 200, 500 people. The biggest group we did, we did 10,000 people in one day. Whoa, 10,000? You know? 10,000, yeah, 10, only passengers, but on the super speedway. So our company is uh, uh, can really deliver every kind of experience from a small group uh, of passion people that want to fight and race together yeah. to the big company that can come over here and create a big event with a speedway here to bring a lot of people. I, I, I love it. I love yeah. this place. Now, how much maintenance do these supercars take? Because you're actually pushing the cars how they should be uh, driven on the track. Uh, what kind of maintenance on the Ferraris and the Lamborghinis and the Porsches? 
uh, because most people are just driving these in uh, you know town like Los Angeles during the day. They're never going to really torque these cars. Are they? Uh, they seem to me now that all these cars are pretty damn bulletproof. The old days, you get a Ferrari, you're like, oh shit, I gotta, I gotta do a valve adjustment. It's forty grand or something, you know. Uh, back in the days, you drive it like ten thousand miles, valve adjustments, uh, 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 oil change would be ten grand. What kind of a maintenance on them? But look, first of all, uh, the cars are really reliable, a lot, and, yeah. uh, and nearly all of them. Uh, the quality, uh, the improvement of quality of uh, all the components of a car from the manufacturer is unbelievable. The cars are really uh, reliable, um, difficult to have problems. Sometimes it happened, but it happened before, but a uh, few things. It's more electronic, uh, uh, but, but engine, gearbox, uh, everything is so nice. And that's, that's the technology, that's uh, uh, the electronic, uh, the gearbox. We, we don't have manual gearbox, we have only paddle shift. It's impossible to miss a gear. Yeah. You don't have a clutch. Yep. If you are not familiar with the clutch, and you burn it you, up. and if you take the younger generation and you put the with a manual gearbox, few of them they are really able to drive the car without uh, uh, you know paddle it, shift pa pa without uh, w without making mistake. Right. So that's that's the difference. I often hear this, and and answer me if you think this is true, that if you drive a uh, a Porsche, let's say the 992 uh, GTRS, uh, is is definitely one of the squirreliest and wildest and analog feeling cars I've ever driven. Do you feel if you're a fantastic driver in the Porsche that you are really a, 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 an awesome dr a racer a driver? Because you know, I drove the Ferrari 488 and I felt like. I couldn't make any mistakes, but then when you get into the 992, you could make a mistake and and it's over with. Ah, all the cars are different. The way the way to drive it and the way to 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 feel a car, it's so different. There are cars that have uh, uh, sometimes more stability, made by the fact also a lot of component. Uh, the tires are very important. We are in a partnership with Pirelli, which supply all our cars, and they are the best uh, tires for that kind of cars for sure. And uh, it, it's it's difficult, and the 992 have an engine position that right. is not uh, hanging natural, out the wheels uh, to 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 have a, a super balanced car. Everybody knows. Yeah. The thing is that the 911 is from 1963, and it's a model that still now that shape it's still selling a lot of cars. It's great, and they they they, they don't have to change it. They have to leave the engine like it is, yeah. and the people have to learn how to drive it like it is in fact if you don't reach the limit of the car which you can hear that's why you feel it you felt that yeah feeling uh, on the road they are spectacular car very beautiful yeah uh, lamborghini great success uh, the new huracan uh, never had a problem uh, so, so so good o all the cars let me say do you think ferrari is the greatest or porsche in motor, in uh, it depends on the on the production car. The two uh, higher brand uh, existing in the world today is Lamborghini and Ferrari. Lamborghini is, uh, believe it or not, is more, I believe, uh, uh, desire from the American uh, client than the Ferrari. Is that right? Yes, and in Europe is the opposite. Ferrari is more probably. But not a big difference between the two. The two brands, they are so exclusive and they, they produce such a beautiful car. Porsche have another kind of client. It's beautiful, it's nice, but it's more simple. If you go inside the Porsche and you open the door, you see everything, let me say German. Beautiful, effective, uh, nice, but simple. Yeah. Okay. Um, there is no sophistication. There is a, the quality is still there. Uh, Ferrari and Lamborghini, they have a super quality of everything, but uh, so they have the power, they have the history, they have, I mean, uh, Ferrari, how many championships Formula One? Lamborghini won the last two Daytona 24-hour uh, race. We are talking about uh, 
people that invest their life and the, the brand that they build during the year, these two brands are on top of everybody. Now also McLaren is coming, Mercedes is super appealing, but when you believe me, when you sit inside a Ferrari yeah. a, or a Lamborghini, yeah. the feeling to drive, uh, y you... you I have the feeling to get inside the history, the, 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 like a movie. You feel I'm driving a Ferrari, I'm driving a Lamborghini. Yeah. You know, I'm not driving with all the respect of all the other cars. Yeah. You know, the, 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 in fact, the people they, they love to when, when they sit inside a Ferrari. I mean, how many times they stopped me on the road in, in Europe with a Ferrari or a, or a Lamborghini because I was speeding a little bit too much? And they stop, and the first thing uh, the police look at the car and say, How oh, beautiful it is! Oh. You know? <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, can you make me some discount on the fine? <laughs> no, so you have to pay and go slow. Yeah. You, you live out in Vegas now. How do you like it? I like it. The city and the country has been very helpful and welcoming us uh, in this environment. Uh, in this city, the city is spectacular. Uh, I, will, I will not change it for any other city in the States, even if I like all the city, but this is, this, this, this is a feel at home. When I came here, I said, let me go home. My home is here. That's it's great. Las Vegas. And it's not, I, don't, I don't party so much. I don't gamble. I'm here for working. But I enjoy the community. I enjoy the people. And uh, I enjoy the Las Vegas Motor Speedway and the people that work here. It's, it's a dream. Let's get into uh, the last thing before we get out of here. You are a watch guy. And I love what you have on your wrist today. You have a uh, Patek Philippe on. Uh, what is that? A 5726? Which model is that? Oh, yes. oh, oh, okay. Yeah, it's a uh, 5712. Go, uh, rose gold? Is that rose gold or yellow yes. gold? Rose. Rose, rose gold, yep, yep. leather band. When did you get into watches and what was your first uh, high end watch? Did you get into watches because of the Daytona? Rolex, Daytona? No, I never had the chance to win that watch. Unfortunately, I did Daytona six or seven times, leading three, four times, but uh, I never had the chance to finish the, on the top of the podium, which, uh, which means that you're going to have yeah. a, a, yeah. a, an original podium uh, Rolex 24. I, 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 have, I have it because I had to buy yeah, yeah. for myself. <laughs> but believe it or not, uh, the, the, uh, I'm Italian. I, I love watches. I love shoes. I love cars. I love food. I love wine. I love everything that they also the other thing that I cannot say. Yeah. Uh, but but, <laughs> but I, love, I, love, uh, I love everything that in life gives you the pleasure to... And uh, I feel privileged to be in this position. And I hope that I can continue like this forever. What's your favorite watch? Patek. Patek has yeah. always uh, been my favorite watch. It's a, it's a very exclusive, very nice. Uh, I appreciate and I like also the work that Rolex are doing. Because uh, to produce that amount of watch with that quality and to be on top of the world on sales for so many years, yeah. it's, it's, it's a great achievement. It yeah. means that the team is solid and the people that are working over there, they are really champion. I just love a great watch. It's like a car. If you got a great car, a great watch, and a good pair of shoes... What, and, and some what sunglasses? Uh, sunglasses. What oh, else do you need? Uh, nothing. Right? No. Some, nothing. Some pasta carbonara with a nice bottle of wine. Yeah. You know, Amarone yeah. or b b beautiful wine, Prosecco. And uh, that's, that's what we need. I can't thank you enough for talking to me. I absolutely love your place. I've been out here many times. And uh, you're a fantastic human. It was just great to sit down and talk to a, uh, a champion in life, man. That's what you are. It's like you, you've won. You're happy. You're, you're in your 50s, and you, you've got an incredible business, and you're still in racing. That's what I love. Yes. You, you're doing something you love since you were a child, and same with me. I've been on stage all my life, and, and there's no better uh, happiness than that, you know, being uh, at your age or my age, and we're just like, wow, we're alive. We get out of the house. Every day, we do what we love. Thank you, man. Dream Racing, open every day? Open every day, 330 days per year. A lot of cars come over here to drive. And, yep. uh, Insta I, if, 
Instagram is Dream Racing. Yeah. Yep. Instagram, Facebook, uh, you can find us online, www.dreamracing.com. We are everywhere. I and saw your daily r- driver <laughs> when I walked in. Rolls yeah. Royce, what is that, Phantom? Yeah, Phantom, yes. I love you. Ah, Phantom, uh, yes. <laughs> yeah, the, ah, Phantom. That thing is it's, beautiful. It's a nice, uh, soft, soft car. At my age, I have to protect my back oh, on, yeah. the, on the road. <laughs> And uh, and to use my back uh, to go fast in the car. In fact, I still I still uh, active. I drive cars. Oh yeah. Every every yeah every here and there. When a new car come, believe me, I'm the first one who uh, who make uh, uh, the, 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 the to make the car understand what kind of wind is blowing out there. We, we have to go fast. We have to have performance. Uh, and so I test all the cars that come over here. That's amazing. So, I like it. What's your favorite car production right now? Uh, if somebody was going to buy a supercar, what is your favorite? Before we number, get out. Number one yep. is uh, the Huracan Performante. The what? Huracan. Oh, Lamborghini, the Hur- oh, oh, Lamborghini. Huracan Performante. That's, in my opinion, the best car as today to drive on the road and on the racetrack. No shit, huh? Yes. All right. Big value. All right. All right. Great job. Big car. Easy to drive, super fast, uh, fancy enough, even too much sometimes. Wow. Uh, yeah, wow. You know, it's, it's a car that when you open the door, the people from outside look and they say, who going to come out from that car? Yeah, yeah, yeah. You yeah. know? <laughs> it's that yeah. kind Curb of car. Curb appeal, they call yeah. that. <laughs> and at the same time, have the enough performance to really yeah. surprise everybody. All right, guys, thanks for tuning in to another episode of Let There Be Talk. Don't forget, when you come to Las Vegas, man, get out of the casino. Take a quick 15-minute drive over here to the track and and get in one of these cars, man. Don't waste your money on, on playing craps or any of that shit. Get out here, and you're going to spend this money, and you will never forget this, uh, this opportunity. You go home with an incredible video um, of, of you driving the car inside the car, you get an amazing photograph and, and you're going to get, I'm telling you, you will not stop talking about this. Thank you everybody for tuning in. Keep the candles lit.